Today, 17 years ago, I had my first panic attack. It's hard to believe that it's so long ago already. To me it seems like it was just yesterday. At least I can still remember everything as if it was yesterday. I was only 19 years old and had just started my first year at university. I moved into my first own apartment, about an hour away from my parents, and I was curious and excited about the life that was ahead of me. But then things changed rapidly and everything seems to get out of my control. First, one of my friends died in a car accident. She was only one year older than me and after finishing school we felt like we had the whole life ahead of us. We had plans for the future, places we wanted to travel, new things we wanted to try out. And all of a sudden, this future was taken away from one of us. I didn't really take my time to process all of this. I tried to move on as quickly as possible and thought I would be fine. In hindsight, this was probably one of the mistakes that led to all of the struggle. And then I was away from home for the very first time in my life. I grew up in a small town, permanently surrounded by family and friends. And moving into a city with no one I knew was a huge step. At university, I also had problems to connect to anyone. I felt like I didn't really fit in. The relationship I had back then also caused me a lot of trouble and heartache. I wasn't happy, but I had never learned to talk openly about my feelings or about any problems. And I had also never learned how to get out of situations or relationships I didn't feel comfortable with. So I was alone, had no friends or family around me, was fighting with my boyfriend on the phone each and every day, and had not taken the time to process the loss I had experienced. And then, out of a sudden, things got worse. It was a Saturday evening, I went to the movies with friends and my boyfriend in my hometown, and about halfway into the film I started to feel strange. As if the room started to move around me, it became difficult for me to breathe, my heart started to beat as if I was running a marathon, my palms were sweaty, my breath was going faster and faster and I felt more and more dizzy. And as if I was about to lose consciousness every moment. I looked around, but no one seems to notice my change in behavior. I didn't really know what to do or what was happening to me. The only thing I felt was the strong urge to leave the room, to run away. So that's what I did. I left the cinema hall and went to the restrooms and splashed some cold water onto my face, hoping this would help. But it didn't. And it seemed to me like no matter what I tried, nothing could stop that feeling. And not knowing what to do, I just walked around the cinema's entrance hall and must have looked completely desperate and also exhausted by that time. Cause a woman who was a member of the staff walked right over to me and asked me if everything was okay. And apparently nothing was okay. But since I didn't really knew what was wrong myself, I just said that I have some circulatory problems, cause that's what I thought it was back then. So she offered me a glass of water and asked me if I wanted her to call the ambulance. But as soon as she had said this, I had this picture in my head of me being packed into the ambulance while everyone coming out of the movies would stare at me. And this thought made me feel so uncomfortable that I heavily shook my head and said I wouldn't need any more help. The woman then asked me if I was alone or if I had any company. And that was actually the first time I remembered that my friends were still in the cinema hall. So I told her the row and number of my boyfriend's seat and also his name and she went in and came back with him. And only by the look on his face I could already tell that he was not happy about the change of plans. A few minutes later, we were sitting in the car on our way back home and we didn't talk much. He was quiet most of the time and I just stared at the reflections of the streetlights on the asphalt. He also didn't want to know what was wrong or how I felt, quite the opposite. He was annoyed that I had ruined the night out with our friends. I felt like this misfit again, the one who just can't do anything right. It hurt me, it sure did, but I felt so exhausted I just wanted to go to bed and fall asleep. The next day, on Sunday, I went to see my parents and had the chance to privately talk to my mother about the incident the night before. And while I described to her how I felt, she started nodding and smiling a little bit, as if she knew exactly what I was talking about. And to my surprise, she knew. And she just said, yeah, there was a panic attack. 
And then, for the first time ever, she told me that she has panic attacks as well. And she told me a little bit of how it had started and how she had experienced her first panic attack at the age of 21. And I can still remember how surprised I was, because I would have never guessed that my mom would have any issues like this. She always cared about everyone, about my brothers, about my dad and of course about me. And she always seemed to be so strong and didn't complain about anything. On that day, she also told me that she had hoped that I would never have to deal with this, but apparently I would have to. She gave me a few tips on how to deal with the anxiety if there should be another attack, but we both hoped that it would be the first and the last one. Unfortunately, the small glimmer of hope was already destroyed the next day. It was Monday and I was driving back home to the city to attend university later that day. And while I was in my car and in my apartment, everything was fine. But then, when I walked to the lecture hall, I felt it again. The dizziness, the sweaty palms, the racing heart, and the urge to run as fast as I could and as far away as possible from whatever it was that frightened me. And as much as I tried to keep going and try to make my way to university step by step, I couldn't. The anxiety grew stronger and stronger until I felt like I was eaten alive by a monster inside of myself. And the only thing I could do was go back home. On the same evening, I drove back to my parents. I felt horrible and being alone didn't make it any better. I also wanted to see a doctor the next day, hoping they would be able to help me. But the next day, I wasn't even able to leave the house anymore. Only two days ago, my mom and I were sitting together and were talking about the chance that it would only be one single panic attack. And suddenly, I was standing in the hallway of my parents' house and couldn't even open the front door. Even the few steps over to the letterbox were too much for me to take. I felt like I was trapped inside of my own body with no way to escape. With my mother's help, I eventually made it to the doctor, who was only five minutes away, and she took the time to explain to me how these panic attacks work and why they make me feel so horrible. She also gave me some pills that would help me to calm down and find the courage to leave the house again. And luckily, this helped. It still took me about two weeks to be able to reach the letterbox without panicking, but step by step I could make my way back to a somewhat normal life. At least I felt secure within a certain range around my parents' house, and I was able to visit friends and go to buy groceries. It felt like I had to learn how to live again. I never went back to university though, at least not to this specific one. I also moved out of the apartment and back to my parents for a while. It all felt like a huge step back, but it was necessary. Within about a year, I had almost recovered and was able to start another try at a different university in a different city. In hindsight, I gotta say that I'm really, really happy about all the help I initially received by the employee of the cinema, for example, who saw that something was wrong and that I wasn't feeling well and who immediately came over to me and offered help, or by the doctor who took the time to explain what was going on with me and why I felt the way I did. And then, of course, I'm incredibly thankful for my mother's help and also that she shared her story with me, a story she barely shared with anyone else and that she was able to give me some tips and help me throughout this first year whenever I was struggling or was set back. And I'm also happy that I had no idea what was lying ahead of me and how much more struggles and anxiety I would have to face, but also how much I would learn from it and how much I would grow. But this is a story for another day. <laughs>